Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we're going to examine nodal analysis. And what nodal analysis is, it's a method of circuit analysis that allows you to find the voltages and currents through all the resistors in a circuit when you have resistors and voltage sources and current sources in it. And it can be applied to pretty much any circuit. There aren't really any limitations. And basically what it involves is finding all the nodes in the circuits, identifying the currents in the circuits, coming up with a Kirchhoff's current law equation for each one of the nodes, and then solving that system of equations. Node analysis is fairly straightforward and quite systematic. The only challenge is probably going to happen at the end, and it kind of depends on how many nodes you have. You have to solve a system of equations, and the more nodes you have, the more equations that you have to solve. And this is really just algebra and can be done with a number of different software tools or even your calculator if you have the right kind of calculator. So what we're gonna do is go through all the steps that are involved in nodal analysis and the best way to do that is to start with an example and what we're gonna do is do the nodal analysis on that circuit there. The first step in nodal analysis is not strictly necessary but it can simplify things a little bit and it's to convert all of the voltage sources into current sources. So in the circuit that we have, we have one current source and we have one voltage source. So what we'll do is we'll convert this voltage source into a current source. And let's just do that in place. So if we have a 12 volt source and a six ohm output resistance of that source, the current source, equivalent current source will be 12 volts over six ohms. It is a two amp source with a, we use the, remember we use the same resistance. So it's going to be a six ohm resistor in parallel with it. The second step is to identify all the nodes, and those are all the junctions where there's three or more circuit branches going into that junction. And it looks like we have a node right here, and we have a node here, and we have one node there. And with all the nodes that you identify, you need to pick one that's going to be your reference node that all the other nodes are measured with respect to. And the easiest one to pick is usually the, the ground node or the bottom node here. So this one here is going to be our reference. And then we have two other nodes that are going to be measured in reference to it. Third, we'll assign arbitrary voltages to each one of the nodes. So this one we'll call V1, and this one we will call V2. And those are both measured. V1 is with respect to the, this refer the reference, and V2 is also with respect to the same reference. Uh, one, one thing that we can actually do is simplify the circuit a, get, a bit before we go on to the next step. And we can combine the three ohm and the six ohm resistor because they are in parallel with each other. And we can combine, when we combine them together, it gives us a two ohm resistor. So the equivalent circuit will look like this. This just makes things a little bit simpler to figure out. And then once we have figured out what the V1 and V2 actually are, we can put that, the, those two resistors back in and figure out what the currents are through them. The fourth step is to assign arbitrary current directions to each one of the branches going into the nodes. Um, I'm going to erase the circles to start with. That just makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And assign some arbitrary current directions in each one of these branches. I don't need to assign one for each one of these two current sources because those are already assigned, but I can go call that I1, call that I2, and call that I3. If the current is actually going in the opposite directions of what I've drawn there, that's okay. That just means that the current we calculate is going to be a negative number. The fifth step is to create a Kirchhoff's current law equation for each one of the nodes. So we've got two nodes, V1 and V2, we could actually call these nodes, well, let's just call them A and B. And for node A, what do we have? Well, we have one amp going into the node and I1 and I2 going out of the node. So the currents coming out of the node, the total of those currents is equal to the current going into the node. Pretty straightforward. And then for the other node, we have I2 going into the node, I3 going out, and two amps going in. So for node B, we have I2 
plus two amps equals I3. The next thing to do is re rewrite each one of these arbitrary currents, I1, I2, and I3, in terms of the voltages across them and the resistances that the current's going through. So for I1, we have V1 across that 10 ohm resistor. I2 is V1 minus V2 divided by 5. And for node B, I2 is the same. It's going to be V1 minus V2 over 5 plus 2 amps equals I3. And here I3 is going in this direction. That's VB or V2 across it. So V2 over 2. And now that we've written the KCLs in terms of the voltages and the resistors, we can group terms and then just put them into a form that's going to be easier to solve. Um, so what we have is V1 over 10 plus V1 over 5 minus V2 over 5 equals 1. And over here, let's bring the V2 over 2 to this side of the equation and the 2 over to that side. So we have V1 over 5 minus V2 over 5 minus V2 over 2 equals 2. And then we can go um, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5 times V1 minus 1 over 5 V2 equals 1. Okay, and then for node B, what we have is 1 fifth V1 plus negative 1 fifth minus 1 half V2 equals 2. So that's 1 fifth, oh, actually let's do it in decimal form. And let's go back to this one. We get, that would be 0.3 V1 minus 0.2 V2 equals 1. And here we get 0.2 V1 minus 0.7 V2 equals 2. Okay, now we're at a point where we have two equations describing what's going on in the circuits, what's going on at those particular nodes, in terms of two unknowns. And, and so we've got this set of simultaneous equations that we can solve where there's a number of different ways we can do it. We can do it by hand with substitution. We can do it by hand with Kramer's rule. We can use our calculator. We can use MATLAB or some alternative. We could use Excel. All sorts of options. I'm not going to go through all those options now. I'll let you do it. And in a, another video, you can see how you can see a number of different options that I've gone through to, to solve this. And what I end up with is V1 is equal to 110 over 17 volts, which is, and V2 is 80 over 17 volts, which is 4.70 volts. And I know that these numbers are right because I've, I've checked it already. But if you have just done these calculations and you recognize that there are so many different places that you can make a mistake, you can make a mistake with setting up your equations, you can make a mistake with solving these, this, this, this set of simultaneous equations, lots of different places to make a mistake. So just to double check that you're correct, we can plug these numbers back into, let's say into this initial equation here, or this one, and see if that equation holds true. So let's do that check. So if I, for V1, I have 110 over 17, and that's over 10, plus 110 over 17 minus 80 over 17, and that's all over 5, equals 1 amp. So if this holds true, then I know that I've done my, my calculations correctly. And what I end up with is 11 over 17 plus 6 over 17, which equals 17 over 17, which is 1. And it looks like I've done my calculations correctly. So I hope these steps in this example has given you some insight into how to do nodal analysis.
So now you've got this set of tools, you can go ahead and do your own nodal analysis, tackle those homework problems. As always, I really appreciate you watching. See you next time.